G'day and welcome to a new video. Sorry about there being no video last week, but it was a massive week with my 30th birthday, which a lot of people, if you follow me on Instagram especially, will know. It was a big week to get our outdoor entertaining area finished, ready for my 30th. Big week, but I'm back this week with another video. And to be honest, I can't believe the video I'm making today because my wife surprised me with the most incredible present of all time. This beast here is a MoMaster HC26, the high cut model. Um, and it's one of the best mowers, residential mowers, that money can buy. It is amazing. The build of this thing, the quality of it, the quality of MoMaster, you hear MoMaster owners talk about their, their mower and how incredible it is. And it's always been something I've been envious of. And this is a machine here yeah, that I, just, I can't believe, I can't believe I own it. So. Yeah, my wife from, I had a mate who told me that when we played golf in January, six months ago, he was subtly trying to get information out of me of color, brand, size, all these sorts of things. And so it's been a big operation from my wife for this to come to fruition. And I just can't believe I own it. I can't believe I own this thing. So yeah, my best mate, and his dad, they brought it in, they got it shipped firstly, they got it down here, my wife, um, got it to my mate's dad's place, it sat there, they brought it in on Thursday night when I was at footy training and then Friday morning. The only present I asked for was a set of kitchen scales. And then once I'd opened those, um, this was out in the shed. So yeah, there's a video on Instagram which will be posted probably about four days before this YouTube video goes up. So check that out if you want to, to see more of that. But yeah, it's just unbelievable. How lucky. How unbelievably lucky. So stats for some of the lawn nerds out there. As I said, this is the HC26, the high cut model, which goes up to 50 mil um, and down to, I think 10 is a minimum height of cut on this. Um, it's got the solid rear roller. It's got the split rear roller, um, which is gonna make it easier, I believe, for turning around and maneuvering. Um, and then this is a 10 blade reel as well. Um, which is amazing. Um, I had an eight on my mass board, so to have a 10 on this is gonna be great. Incredible, incredible cut with that 10 blade reel. If you do not know much about cylinder mowers, they are self-propelled. Um, and maybe somewhere in the world, there's a cylinder mower that isn't self-propelled, but due to the weight of these things, um, they are this in particular. This mower here is 209 kilos. My old mower is about 70, so triple the size. So the weight of this thing is insane. So yeah, the stripes with it are gonna be a bit nuts. And one of the other main details that is really important about this mower is the width of the cutting reel. Now when I say HC26, this means that it's the high cut model and it's 26 inches wide. So my old mower, 20 inches. So this being 26, uh, a lot more width, which in theory means that three pa four passes with my mass sport is about three with this. And so it's something that my wife told me, Luke at Moe Master and her and another mate, they tossed up and were not sure about. And in the end, they so decided the 26 would probably be, be the best. And this is something I thought about a lot as well. One day, if I was, well, when I get a bigger mower, because I always needed a bigger mower, I never accepted, expected something like this. Um, but would I get 26, 28? And I was sort of thinking, you know, should I try and find someone in this area who owns a 26, a 30 even, just to, just to see? Um, but yeah, I think I am gonna be really happy with the 26. In theory, if it takes me 25 to 30 minutes with the smaller mower. I'm hopefully for a single pass looking at more like 20 now with this mower, once I get used to it and, and how to maneuver it. 
And that is definitely gonna be one of the challenges is getting used to this mower and being able to use it uh, properly um, and get it around the yard. One of the things mentally that is difficult, and I use some mow masters on my back lawn for my um, lawn renovation in January. I had a mate who brought over his verti cutter and his cylinder um, to use. And something that is very different is this drive lever here to make the mower go forward and self-propel, you actually have to let this out. So letting it out just a tiny bit will just let the mower go a little bit. So when I get to the end of a run and I'm trying to turn the mower around and just have it not be doing it all myself, but just having a little bit of give from the mower to, for it to turn around and to keep going, is that I only want to be letting that out a tiny bit. Um, and if I was to let that go, full speed is what the mower would be going at. Whereas with the my old mower, there was a bar across here and you would push it in. And if you were holding that in fully, that would be full speed. And if you were just pushing it in slightly, that would have you just going, if you were doing a turn or something like that. So it's something that I found, there was a couple of times um, when James was here that mentally just, you know, using the mower and everything I've got mixed up, whatever, um, and the mower took off on me. So yeah, it's gonna be something to get used to and maneuvering around garden beds and things like that. But overall, with this being such a big open space, this mower is gonna be so much more suitable. Now, something I have talked about before is the difference in height of cut when we're using a cylinder mower versus a rotary mower. If you set your rotary and your cylinder to 25 mil, they're not gonna be both the same, no way. And it's the same thing with these bigger cylinder mowers, which is something I have also talked about, I believe on YouTube before. I've seen people before that have had their lighter cylinder mowers and they've had their lawn cut to say 15 mil. And then they tr use a bigger mower like this, set it to 15 mil, and it really scalps the lawn really hard. So that is something that I cannot afford to do um, in the middle of June. Um, when the lawn is not growing well, um, it's gonna start going into dormancy, the weather's cold, the lawn's not growing. If I do damage to it now, it's not gonna repair until September, October. So I'm gonna be really cautious today. I've been cutting at 22 mil with my mass board. I've got that set to 30 mil, is what I've adjusted it to. So there's this lever on the side here. I'm not using the right terms with levers and stuff. That's not a lever, it's something else. But anyway, twisted that, I've adjusted it to be 30 mil, um, which is very conservative. Um, but I would rather run over this a couple of times, take off absolutely no grass and go, yeah, okay, um, that was too high. But yeah, I really don't wanna set this to 25, scalp it. So let's have a look. Hopefully it's not too soggy with this big machine that, yeah, hopefully it's in good enough condition out here that it's gonna be, I'm gonna be able to use it <laughs> properly for the next three months uh, until we roll around the spring and summer and things dry out. But yeah, really, really excited for this first mow. Gonna take it slow and steady, not gonna be taking off too much grass. I don't think 30 mil is gonna be too low, but we'll just see what happens especially with the ground being so soggy, even more so than if it was firm ground, that's gonna make that height of cut even lower. So look, I may even find that I have to raise it to 35 mil or something. So we'll just see how this first run goes. Look, the lawn doesn't actually really need a cut, um, especially after having heaps and heaps of rain, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Um, it doesn't really need a cut out here, but I'm obviously gonna use this mower. So what I just found then is that I did that stripe there and then just a walk around the perimeter because my next stripe is going to be alongside this one and I barely took off any grass, which I am actually stoked about. And also that bit at the start, I forgot to engage the reel. So I started going along on the mower and the reel wasn't spinning and cutting. So anyway, teething issues as you would expect. But anyway, I'm going to turn this down to 
I don't want to go 25 mil. I'd rather go 27, something like that. See what comes off, do the mo today, and then maybe next week, 25. Just keep playing with it. Um, clearly 30 mil was too drastic, going 30% above, 35% um, above my previous height with the other mower. So anyway, I'll chuck it to 27, I'll mow, and then go from there. Great to get all of that main section done. I normally, when I go across parallel to the pool fence, I normally come across here, do this section, then move on, do the rest of the lawn. I wanted to leave this until last today, just so I was getting used to maneuvering the mower. So I was getting much better at it as I got to the end, down that far end of the lawn. So I'm gonna jump in and do it here. Um, although, I'm still got, Still got an actual puddle there. This, yeah, wow, that is incredibly wet. Um, do you know what? I'm actually not gonna mow that. I talked about how it is quite wet and soggy out on this lawn. Through the middle section, not really any worries whatsoever. Down here, um, a bit in the contrast of the shadow there, it's a little bit hard to see, but you can see there those spots where I've been turning as carefully as I can to walk around and do those runs there. But it's just, yeah, really soggy, really pulling up the grass. And you can see all that mud through this section as well, quite soggy. Um, so yeah, it's basically down along that fence line, this area here, um, alongside this garden bed where I'm doing a lot of my turns um, is where it's quite soggy and crap. So. With the lighter mass bought, I didn't have that issue as much. But now with, like I said, over 200 kilos that mass, uh, that Mo Master is, that, yeah. I'm really gonna hope for the best. We're supposed to have a milder winter um, than others this, this coming winter. It's great that we're already three weeks into it, three weeks out of 12, we're a quarter of the way through winter. So, you know, we're, we're getting there. Hopefully it's not too bad. Last spring was insane for the amount of rainfall we had. So I really, really hope we don't get the same this coming spring. Um, I've got lots of plans for what I'm gonna do to fix this lawn and to make it better for the next year, which I think I already said at the start of the video. But anyway, um, overall, it may end up being a little bit all over the place in terms of what I do with this lawn. I might end up getting to a point where I mow to about two meters off the fence and um, you know, just try to manage it as best I can. Um, not gonna have, yeah, the most incredible winter lawn and it's a shame to not just be able to use this in spring or summer um, and mow with it three times a week and get the most out of it. Um, it's probably even a bit of a stretch today to mow five days after my last mow. At the moment, I feel I could easily be mowing this, you know, every three weeks 
which is what I may end up doing. So yeah, either way though, the colors out here are really nice. Especially towards the end of the mow, I really got the hang, I was getting the hang of the mower um, and controlling it, which is just gonna be an ongoing thing too. And you know, no doubt, I think a lot of, well, look, even with my mass bought when I first started using that, it was an adjustment to get used to and getting the turns. And so it just is a matter of practice uh, and reps of just getting used to it, doing those turns and give me 10, 15, 20 mows and I'll have the throttle um, worked out perfectly. Um, be able to hold nice straight lines. I was happy with how straight I kept the lines, even on soggy, bumpy ground. Can't wait to do more leveling work next, next growing season. Um, but yeah, definitely got, was getting the hang of it more and more throughout the mow. Um, yeah, damn, I wish it was growing season. I mentioned at the start about how it was my 30th on the weekend and how last week I was just that busy and couldn't justify the time to record and edit a YouTube video. Um, here is, if for some reason you only watch my YouTube videos and if you're watching YouTube and you are enjoying it, you have to follow me on Instagram because you're gonna see daily posts and you know things like this outdoor entertaining area. Heaps more updates, but let's have a look. So from the last YouTube update, which probably the last time I talked about this space on here was maybe three weeks ago. Um, yeah, we've got the pizza oven. We had a pizza night on my actual birthday last week, which was amazing with the two kids and my wife. The windows have gone in. Um, there's still plenty of work to do. These tiles are here, but they're not grouted. I've got a grout in the, sorry, tile and grout in the bar. That door needs to get planed down. There's no cladding around that doorway. But yes, we really set ourselves the goal of having this area done for my 30th, and we got so close. Um, but definitely to a point where it was ready enough, I guess. Um, so yeah, I'm still gonna be working out here and finishing off this space, tiling in here and those couple of things that I mentioned, but yeah, really happy to be able to have a bit more time and not have as much, I guess, guilt, but just, you know, to be able to have the time to put into the recording the YouTube videos, take a bit more time with it and all that sort of thing. And just, yeah, after so much time working so hard on this area and setting ourselves that time frame, um, it's gonna be great to enjoy this space, um, take the foot off the gas a little bit um, and put, like I said, some more time into some other things. But yeah, hope you enjoyed that video uh, about the MoMaster. It's a fantastic machine. You can obviously be seeing plenty of it on here. So yeah, if you are seeing this video, you are seeing me for the very first time, then I post a YouTube video every single week, Sunday morning, 7 a.m. Australian Eastern Time. Uh, if you follow me on Instagram, I post a reel pretty much every single day, plus other photos and stuff. My stories are always a bit of fun as well. We have a bit of a laugh on there and some good engagement on my stories. Um, don't follow me on TikTok because I just repost reels on that platform and I get so many idiots in the comments that, yeah, don't follow me there. Um, but yeah, anyway, thank you for watching. See you in the next one. Do I have a beer? I haven't had a beer since my 30th. I'm still probably a little bit hungover. Should I? Maybe later.